a squirrel tail. And this one's been dyed nice light ginger. I'm going to stack this to form the wing. Now, the hook, it's entirely up to see what hook you pick. The hook I'm, I'm using here is a Camasan, it's a B170 size 14. The thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread, an olive, an 8 -oh. And I'm simply going to put down a layer of thread along the shank. Now, I'm going to go slightly around the bend in this case. Normally I would stop in line with the barb. I'm going to just take the thread round because I'm going to form a small egg sac using some dubbing. And uh, the area you want that to be is just slightly up towards the back like that. It's like a small tag. Now, the material I'm going to be using for the body is uh, it's called frog's hair dubbing. Now, this is 100% natural. Look in the back here. 100% all natural dubbing. Now, the dub is very easy. As you see, it's good for thorax or dries, comparadons, hoppers, stoneflies. So, it's very versatile material. It's good for, I like it in the, the small flies. Now, this is called PMD. Um, the colour to me is just a nice, it's like a fluorescent yellow. It's ideal for the, the egg sac. Now the greens and the, or the olives, browns, oranges, things like that are good. Now I just simply form like a a tag, like a small ball or dubbing at the back. Just slightly come back on yourself just to form that nice. Basically a small egg sac, which is like a small ball as I said. Now for the second part of the the main part of the body, I'm using what's it called a brown olive. Let's dub it on. Slide it up. And again, just form the shape. I want it like a tapered type shape for the body. Now, you need plenty of room for tying in squirrel, and especially a fly or a hook this size. You've got to give yourself a good 3mm of an area to tie all, all that in, including the hackle. So, that looks fine. Yep. Now, take some of the smaller hair from the bottom of the tail, which has got a nice black mark, as well as a light tip. So when you stack it, it's just a nice contrast between the two. Cut it close to the skin, take away the fine fluff at the bottom. Then what I'm going to do here is put it into a small hair stacker. Just put it in tip first. Any broken ends I would remove them, I don't like the cut ends. Get them into your stacker. Now if you left the fine fluff at the bottom, it would never stack. Uh, plus it would cause too much bulk. Now there's the, the ends all lined up. Remove them from the stacker. Just a wee quick check. There's a couple of cut ends there I'm going to remove. Which is quite easy because they're thicker, much easier to grab. The length now, I want a good length in the wing. So I'm looking for at least so like twice the length of the body. Just tie that on the top nice and tight. Then remove the waist. Normally what I like to do then is carry on down towards the eye and back up, which tidies everything up. Basically gives you a good base for tying in your next material. Now you see the wing sitting quite high, I like to lower that, it's very easy to do that, it's to crease the fibres down the end here where you've tied them in. Just simply draw them back with your finger, you'll see the crease there, that just basically lowers the wing. And want it nice and tight on top, just like that. Now, hacker you're looking for is like a, a medium coloured ginger, natural, natural hackle. And the fibre length can be as short as the gape, or just a, just slightly longer, which I like more. Just catch it on the side, and I'm looking, and I'm tying this on the underside. Of the, that's the front of the hackle, front of the cape. This is the underside. 
So if you tie this, the hackle fibers go forward to the eye or go towards the eye. And just build up your hackle turns. One turn in front of the other. Working your way down. You get to this point here, just across your thread. Nice and tight. A few turns in. Turn away. Anything going forward to the eye. Tidy up. Now, waxing the thread before you tie off. Or even waxing it before you tie or why are you waxing it and tying your fly? This is just the cobbler's wax. This causes it to be really, really sticky. And to be honest with you, times you don't need to varnish. Because it's water resistant, protects the thread. Basically that's the old way of doing it. And I always tied my dries like that at one time. And a lot of people did the same. Didn't have to put varnish on your fly. And that worked a treat. If you're not 100% with that, don't worry. You can come in as well. Just a wee touch of varnish all the way around. To finish it off. It's a double security if you want to call it that. And there you are. And that there is a wee squirrel. Or squirrel wing. Caddis or sedge pattern. Very simple to tie. Lovely wee effective, a great wee pattern to have in your box. You just got to be careful when you're tying it. The main thing you've got to remember is to give yourself plenty of room at the front. And there you are. Now, sometimes the fish don't like basically the under hackle part, the has part of the hackle breaking the surface for them. Most times I would keep it whole first and then I would work away with it, casting to the fish. If the fish are coming on to it, okay, no problem, just leave it as it is. But there is sometimes I just like to see the impression of the fly in the water. And the way to get that is to come in with your scissors and trim away the underside. Take the all the fibres from the hackle and away underneath. It opens a small window. And what that does is makes a, a small indentation that gives an impression of the fly in the surface. And this here comes up and it sits, draws the surface film down a bit. And the fish like that at times, especially when they're a wee bit fussy. And if you keep your scissors in your pocket, obviously you can do that. It's certainly worth doing and worth trying. Mm -hmm.